Hello, good evening, and welcome along to Extra Time here on Fox's Hub with me, Dan Bates. You and Roberts and Jerry Taggart are with me in the studio, and Tony Cotty joins us uh, via Teams uh, this evening. Uh, good evening to the four of you, or the four of us, rather, the three of us. Uh, good evening to everybody at home uh, who is watching along, be that on Facebook or YouTube or the website, but if you are on either of those first two, then do get involved with the show, get your comments in, get your questions in to our panel. Uh, we're going to talk about two less than ideal results, really, for, from a Leicester point of view in the last week, of course, defeats at Millwall uh, and then against Plymouth. But uh, things still very much in Leicester's hands with some of the other results that took place uh, over those um, over the last week or so. We've got uh, four massive games left at the end of this championship season we've got our lurdle for you guys at home to get involved with we'll do football jenga at the end of the show we'll talk efl awards and also the lcfc goal of the season as well so it'll be a busy hour and hopefully we can raise the spirits somewhat after these two away defeats uh good evening firstly to you you and how are you doing i'm good i'm, good. Uh, I'm coming to the studio tonight because as we know last week we had a load of Technical problems. I could hear myself talking twice, and that's never a good thing, Tags, is it? So, and I, I had all. I had, the parents who's listening. Yeah. I had, I had sun, I had rain, I had hail on the way up on the A14. But it's, it's good to be in. It's good. It's much easier when you can make eye contact with people. Good evening to you. Good evening. Good evening, TC. TC. Good evening, Tags. You and Dan. How you doing? You're right, boys. Yeah, yeah good. TC, thanks. have you got a bit of a halo shining on you there? You just love it. You got that? You got the old lamp, the old bedroom lamp. No, oh, all right. No, I'll, I'll, if you want a bit of lighting, I can darken it down a bit. Yeah, no. <laughs> there we go. No, it looks good. No, it's better. fine. Sun is shining yeah, down in Essex, clearly, Tony. Yeah, it, it, can't help it. Yeah, it always is. It always is. Um, yeah, are you good, Tony? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks, Dan. Yeah, I had a relatively busy weekend. Um, I um, <clears throat> I didn't get to see the first half of the game on Friday night, but I did get the second half. I know we're going to talk about that. Um, lost me money uh, betting on the Grand National, as I'm sure as a few of us have been in the studio. We're probably all there, <laughs> aren't we? Uh, yeah, and then um, I, I had the misfortune of going to West Ham yesterday. So it was a bit of a mixed weekend, I think, Dan. Yeah, mixed weekend on, on both the horse racing and the golf, I think. Um, Jerry, you had a good day yesterday watching the, uh, the end of the golf. That was your whole weekend, really? Yeah, well, I actually cleaned the patio yesterday. I I cleaned that was, so I cleaned that was that yesterday. Was, yeah. So yeah, it was very quiet. But yeah, that was my uh, carrot at the end of the stick. If I cleaned the patio, they'd watch the golf. <laughs> you could stay up late. So, you could stay yeah, up past eight o'clock. Yeah. On so, a school night. I, I, I took it gratefully with both hands, believe you me. Uh, <laughs> good evening to Stuart uh, on Facebook, who's listening, and to Andreas on YouTube as well. Right, we'll, we'll move away from horse racing and golf, and let's talk <laughs> football then. Um, obviously, yes, as, as I said, you and two less than ideal results uh, in the last week, but... Leicester still in that automatic promotion place. Somehow quite quite unbelievable, like, really, considering the other results and the other actual fixtures that the other teams had as well. I mean, absolutely unbelievable. For Blackburn to go to, to Ellen Road and stop Leeds from scoring and hit the game 1-0. And what a good counter-attacking goal it was. Uh, Sammy Smodic, the league's top scorer, that's 24 goals. He'll go, I'm sure we'll talk about him a little bit later in, in the programme. I thought... Borough going to Portman Road was always going to be tough because they, they've still got a sniff of uh, a chance of, of the playoffs. So I didn't think that was ever going to be an easy one for Ipswich, especially on the back of the, the, the loss in the Old Farm Derby. I think they drew in midweek as well at home, which wasn't ideal. They failed to score in, in both those games. Um, but yeah, I just didn't see these last two Leicester results coming, if I'm totally honest. But do you know what? And we... We speak about the championship. It's so unpredictable. And I think these two results, and I, I know I love my statistics and all that. I'm going to stop from now. Yeah. <laughs> because Millwall, third worst home record. Plymouth had taken one point in their last six home games, scored one goal in those six. What happens? They both go and beat Leicester when we thought... I mean, I remember doing this programme after the Birmingham game, looking mm -hmm. at the two next away games as a great chance after back-to-back -back home wins to go back-to-back -back away wins and we come away pointless. Yeah, <clears throat> I totally agree. It's it's, it's mad. It's mind-blowing, isn't it? I don't think I've ever known it like this. Uh, you know, when 
you have two or three teams on the way with it, and then all of a sudden you, you're getting results that you know you can't explain. Okay, you, on, on paper, you know you look at the Leeds game against Blackburn and the Middlesbrough game against. Ipswich, and you're thinking, okay, they're, they're tough games. Blackburn have come into a little bit of recent form, and, by the and way. fighting for their lives, by yeah. the way. Uh, so, you know, so not a, a, as big a result or as a big as an upset as you might think that one. And the same with Middlesbrough and Ipswich, you know, because they say Ips, uh, Middlesbrough have still got something to play for. Good form as well, uh, uh, Yeah, and yeah. they're a decent outfit, yeah. Middlesbrough. You know, they've beaten... They play Leeds as well. Yeah, they, they, yeah so... And they've already beaten us twice this season as well. You know, so not, not a big as upset. On paper, you're thinking, as Ewan has rightly said, the two away games, you're thinking you're going to get at least one win. But the stats that Ewan has come up with before, you know, especially at Plymouth, one goal in six games, and that was an own goal against QPR. And, it, and they managed to draw it a lot yeah. via an own goal. So that, that's obviously the, the most frustrating thing. But, as you say, you know, you've seen it in the Premier League yesterday with Arsenal and Liverpool dropping points, dropping big points as well. So it's Handing just, the title to City. Uh, it's, mm-hmm. just, it's just crazy at the minute. It really, really is. Yeah, that, that, that'll be one real disappointment, Tony. But I think the other results have really softened the blow, haven't they, from a Leicester point of view? You know, the boys are talking about stats here. And, you know, I think we all love our stats. I know I love listening to you and some of the stats <laughs> he comes out with are brilliant. But I think we in this sort of modern era of, like, you know, the social media and saturation, radio, TV, we've become very, very obsessed with the stats. But I've always said about stats, there's only one stat that matters. And that's the one that's normally in the top left-hand corner of your screen, which is the score. And we've seen so many times, you see teams, they have 21% possession, and the other team has all the other possession. And then they say, oh, yeah, they, you know, they played really poorly in that. And they've won one nil. And the other team's had, you know, what, eight, 79% possession or whatever it might be, you know. And the, the stats are great for radio listeners. They're great for the TV viewers. I think we all enjoy stats. But they're so misleading sometimes. And, you know, you, you, we're going to games and, you know, Millwall were at the bottom and ain't done this, ain't done that. Plymouth are down the bottom. They're going to get relegated and all these sorts of things and that. And I'm not saying it happens, but sometimes you can get a little bit carried away with them and to the point where you can just get a bit distracted and, and, and feel like, you know, that it's going to be an easy game. As a, as a fan, I'm talking, Dan, not as a player, because the players are professional, but as a fan, I think we can sometimes think, oh, that'd be easy. You know, we'll go there and we we'll win and go there and win. And, and football just proves that it's not like that. And, Tags mentioned the Premier League yesterday. I drove to football yesterday with my mate and I said, if I was having a bet, and I don't bet on football, Dan, I said I would have backed West Ham, Arsenal and Liverpool to win yesterday. All three of them lost. And that tells you everything. It's so difficult to predict the results. And the Premier League, and particularly the Championship, as we've been saying all season, is just so unpredictable. You look at it, and between Ipswich, Leicester and Leeds' his last 15 games, there's only been five victories for the three teams that are at the top of the of the league. I mean, we've been talking for for weeks now, if not months, it's between three teams. Mm, it's not. Leicester, Leeds and Ipswich. All of a sudden, because the three clubs that I've just mentioned have sort of dipped in, dipped in form at the vital minute, what it's done, it's given Southampton a sniff of a chance. You know, if, if they were to win all their remaining games... Considering they've got to come to the King Power next Tuesday, obviously they go to Leeds on on the last game of the season. I mean they've got some tough away games in in in, in that, but I mean they will think Russell Martin will think mm. people have written us off, not giving us a chance. All of a sudden they're back in it. They will they will believe that they've got a they've got a, a real chance of maybe now nicking a top a top two place. Yeah, is it? I think. Because it's so tight at the top now, and you've opened the back door slightly, or it's halfway open, let's call it for Southampton. I think it's how the teams handle the pressure. And uh, and obviously, Southampton have five games left in a two or three week yeah. spell. It's a lot of games. Three week spell, yeah. let's call it. Yeah. It's a lot of games. Yeah. Uh, Leicester obviously have four. Uh, so it's, for me, it's all about how they handle the pressure and the workload between now and the end of the season. You know, big, the pressure is going to be massive 
on these four teams to try and get over the line big, because it's served for everyone. Big surf thing for Leicester, three of the four are at home. Yeah. And you just get the feeling after those back-to-back to home defeats, but Middlesbrough and Leeds, was it? QPR. QPR, Middlesbrough and QPR. All of a sudden, the win against Norwich, that late win against Birmingham, just get a feeling things have mm. turned round at the King Power Touchwood. Hopefully, hopefully, so there's a bit of wood I think yeah. behind you. Yeah, um, well, touch it all, you yeah. don't touch one bit of it. Yeah, but, and, and this is the thing, Tony, is it's, it has been nervy, obviously, for the last couple of months. And I think, well, pretty much for, for the whole season, it, yes, Leicester had, had a lead, didn't they? But until things were mathematically the case, there was always going to be a bit of a doubt. And I think that's the case for every single team in, in the division, isn't it? But Leicester will just be hoping that they can, as Ewan says, with that home form now, three of the last four at home. They know they only need three wins. That guarantees them promotion. Yeah, and the fans are going to play a, play a major role in that, aren't they? Because the KP is going to be absolutely rocking. There's no doubt about that. The fans will be right up for it. But, the, you know, it's interesting listening to the boys, and they both touched on it. It's that key word of pressure, isn't it? You know, when you get to this stage of the season, it's like I, I wasn't involved in a, a promotion race as, as a player, but the one and only year when my team West Ham were going for the league, you you sense that pressure, you feel that pressure and you know you go into games, you, you have to win the games. You you can't, you certainly can't lose the games and you can't even afford to draw the game sometimes. And that, that pressure comes and you can feel it. You can feel it from the fans, you know, like you the, you go to the petrol station, feel like petrol and people are talking about it and as a player, you feel that pressure as well. And it's, you know, the, the, the players are only human. They, you know, they will feel the pressure, but it's how you handle that pressure. You know, that's the important thing. And, you know, it's hard to answer which one of the four teams, because Euron's right, there are four teams now. Southampton, if they get their, if they win their games in hand, they are in the mix now. It's hard to know which one out of the four teams is going to handle the pressure. But from Leicester's point of view, I'll come back to what I said the fans are going to be absolutely vital. You can't ask for more than three out of four home games. It is so difficult to win away from home. In any league, it's always much more difficult to win away from home in general. You know, not every season, but in general, the home form is really, really key to it. Leicester have won the last two home games. They can go into these three home games with real confidence and knowing that if they win those games, that is going to be enough and the fans will play a major part in that. I... The way I think you handle that pressure is you sit in that dressing room and you look at your teammates and you think, we've got more than enough here. To, mm. Not just to finish in the top two, but to win the league. There's a reason why up until the last four or five weeks that Leicester have been top of, top of the table from nearly the, the opening day because they're, they're the best team with probably the best strength in depth of squad that any team of the championship has got. Uh, and they've got to fully believe in, each, in, in themselves individually and in, in, them, in themselves collectively. So they've given themselves an unbelievable chance. Yeah, they've had a setback in, in recent weeks. But they're the best team in the league. Yeah. Uh, good evening uh, to Bubba, uh, who's joined us on YouTube. Good evening, Bubba. Good evening, Bubba. Uh, he says, uh, we have to stay together. Three of the last four are at home. That could be key. Saturday can turn it all around. That, that's actually a good point that he, he makes, Jerry, a really good point. That it's the 12.30 kickoff on Saturday. Mm. Leicester play first this yeah. round of fixtures. If they can get that victory, they go four clear of Leeds, who don't play till Monday evening. Tough trip to Middlesbrough. You know, it's an opportunity, isn't it? Ipswich don't play again now for a couple of weeks. So in fact, Leicester play twice before Ipswich play a game. That could also be key. Wow, I didn't realise that. Because they're supposed to play Coventry, obviously. Oh, Coventry and they're in the cup. the cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so they've got a fixture yeah. pile up as yeah. well there. Uh, Ipswich, right? So, yeah, obviously, uh, playing first gives you, can't, well, can't help you pile the pressure on the other teams. As simple as that. Uh, now, if it was <laughs> three o'clock on a Saturday, it wouldn't have made any difference, would it? Because, as you say, Monday... They don't play till Monday, and 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 obviously have switched play to don't play well whenever. Yeah. yeah, a couple of so yeah, but yes, it's a great opportunity to keep the pressure on, and that's then down the Leeds, Ipswich, Southampton. How do they go into their games? How do they approach their games mentally? Does it play on their minds to the point where they're a little bit nervy when they're going out onto the pitch? Time will only tell, but yeah, without a doubt, 
you know, especially in Adelaide. Exactly. I think it works the other way. It can work the other way as well. Because yeah. we spoke about the home games. And I think that Preston game, I think I'm right in saying it's on the, on the Monday, Monday night, isn't Correct. it? Correct, yeah. Yeah, so it will work the other way. If you, if you don't get those results in the home game and then... The, all the teams play on the Saturday, the, the, the last but one Saturday, and then Leicester are then playing on the Monday night. There's even more pressure comes with that away game. And we know Preston's a difficult place to go to. Mm -hmm. So these two home games are absolutely vital. But if you play first, you know, we spoke about it over the last, certainly over the last few weeks. If you can get that result in the bag, a half 12 kickoff, get the result in the bag, then all that pressure just goes down the road and, you know, it's all on the other team's end. But it, it can work against you if you don't get those results. Yeah, good evening to Paul uh, Sumner on Facebook. He says he agrees with what Tony uh, has been saying. Good evening to Jane. She says, let's just hold it together now. And that, I guess, is a, a, a good point, <laughs> again, because that's what Leicester need to do. They know they've been brilliant all season. They've had a little bit of a blip. Hopefully, that this is it now and, and they win three of the last four. I mean, if you look at... <sighs> I think our last three away games, we've lost 1-0. Mm -hmm. um, the Bristol City game was mental because... All we fairly good individual goals as well. Yeah, and, and we, we, we should have been 3 up probably at Bristol City. You know, Go back to, to the Leeds game where you know, should have been out of sight before Conor Roberts who equalised on the night. Yeah, um, the, the, the Middlesbrough game here, first half... Numerous chances. Queen's Park Rangers, I can't quite remember. So it's we've got to the stage now where I think I think certain players have to take responsibility. They've got to do what they're they're in the team for. You know Pat Sandak is having a tough time. You know, I don't think he's scored a goal since his penalty at Watford. You know, maybe it's time that he comes out the team. I don't want to pick Enzo's team for him because he's got it right. 99% of the time uh, this season, but I think he's struggling for confidence and sometimes you need to take a player out for his own benefit because you know he's obviously getting a little bit of stick on, on social media, not that I'm, I'm sure he doesn't go anywhere near social media uh, but it's time now for players to stand up and be counted and, and get the club over the line Yes, it's uh... Quite a nervy um, <laughs> thing to think about, isn't it? These these final four games of the season. Hopefully we'll be sat here, well, a week tonight after the West Brom game, speaking about a victory. And hopefully we'll be sat here three weeks tonight um, after the final round of the regular season, speaking about Leicester being promoted. Right, let's do the first of our lurdles then uh, this evening. This is a chance for you guys at home to get involved with the show. <coughs> Jerry's got his notepad ready. Clear the throat. Um, we are going to play um, a series of clips um, of commentary of a Leicester City goal. You need to tell us who scored the goal and who the opposition was. Uh, as we go on throughout the show, there's four clips. The clues will get easier as the clip goes on. So... Don't worry if you can't get it from clue number one. Foots tried to foul him but didn't. And the big switch. Terribly so. And now it's Mares. That's all you're getting. So I'll play it one more time. Foots tried to foul him but didn't. And the big switch. Terribly so. And now it's Mares. So we need the goal scorer and the team that it was scored against. Only the smallish clue, obviously, hearing Riyad Mahrez's name narrows down slightly. Um, and the Fuchs. commentator. Oh. Is it Sam? Mm. Sam I thought it was. I thought I recognised the voice. Um, so that gives a little bit of when he was doing that. A little head start for Jerry as he knows the <laughs> the commentators. He always likes to, to do that. Mm. So he's got an idea maybe then, Jerry. Right, we'll see. We need the goal scorer and the team that was scored against. Remember, there's always a link somehow, somewhere, with why we pick each of the goals. And no, Bubba, before you get the guess in, it's not Jamie Vardy <laughs> against Spurs just yet. He has already guessed it. <laughs> in fact. Has he got any of that right? Any? Has he? No. Oh, no, so we're giving away there that it's not a Jamie Vardy goal um, either. West Brom then next, uh, Ewan, of course, uh, on Saturday, as we said, in that early kickoff. They themselves obviously sit fifth in the championship, but you look at their recent run, they've only won one of their last five. They're seven clear of Hull, uh, who are in seventh, but Hull have a game in hand as well. So 
by no means a, a West Brom happy and, and thinking that they're definitely in the playoffs. They've still got a little bit of work to do themselves. No, it's, it, I think it's one of those for, for for West Brom. Had they sort of cemented their playoff position, um, the manager might have had a look at uh, who he would fancy having in, in the semi-final of the playoff and where he'd want his team to finish. I don't know. He might be able to rest a few players. Um, but you're right, they've still got a little bit of work to do. And, you know, we talk about um, weird results. They had one on Saturday when they lost at home to Sunderland. I mean, Sunderland have been in awful form. I mean, you've said they've only won once in how many, however many games. That was their only defeat in their last 11. Um, so they've still got work to do. That's why I do think it'll be, uh, be, be a tough game against Carlos Cor- Corbinon's team. Is that? Yeah. yeah. Um, just going back to the point we were making uh, a little bit earlier as well, it's an interesting point made by Philip Howard, Jerry, on, on Facebook. He says, um, Eric Dyer apparently did an interview, said the reason Spurs never had a chance to catch Leicester in 2016 was often the fixtures worked out that Leicester played first. Mm. So then it was difficult for Spurs. <clears throat> they were always under pressure and trying to catch up. And yeah. So he says the similar applies now, and especially with Ipswich. Yeah. Lead, both Leeds and Leicester actually played twice before Ipswich do again. Yeah, I think... You know, and also, you know, there was a big gap back then as well, wasn't there? I don't know what part of the season. I'm imagining that it was the run-in where, you know, Sky sort of, when it's a run-in till the end of the season, they pick and choose at will, don't they, when they change the games and what time. So I'd imagine it was the last 68 games, whatever. Uh, And there was a bit of a gap. And obviously Leicester were in good form (laughs) in that season anyway at the back end of the season, whereas at the minute, you don't know what kind of form Leicester are in. You say the last two home games, very, very good. The last two away games, not so good. Uh, and so, a little bit of a conundrum going into this game. And as I said the other night, you know, if you're going on current form, i.e. the last four games, and three of them are at home, then you're keeping your fingers crossed that the form returns this Saturday at 12.30, you know, uh, and then, as you say, then you can apply that pressure on the other teams. Yeah, just, just thinking about the fixture. It's horrible. It, it yeah. is horrible. Because, I mean, I think we all would agree that going into the last four games, we thought it'd be done and dusted. We thought it'd yeah. be sort of party time, promoted, you it, know, be comfortable. We wouldn't sort of be in this difficult scenario that we find ourselves in. In fairness to Enzo, he said this quite a while ago, that it would go all the way down to the mm. wire. Now, I don't know whether he was just saying that, you know... To keep people's feet on the floor. Yeah, yeah. Or, 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 yeah. Or, you know, just to make sure that, hold on a minute. Don't get carried away. Or, or whether he truly believed that it would go don't down to the wire. Don't get complacent, yeah. But, I mean, it's going down to the wire no matter what way you look at it. Yeah, I mean, Tony, you, you hear everyone always talk about the championship and how unpredictable it is. And we... And we kind of hadn't seen that really for the first 30 games or so. And then suddenly now we really have, and it is, none of us are neutrals, let's let's put it that way. But for a neutral watching this, they, it must be fantastic to watch. It's, it's, it's torture for those of us that, that are involved. I think it's why English football is probably revered around the world because it is so competitive. I mean, in general, like a lot of the, the leagues in Europe, you get one or two teams at the top who are really good clubs, and then you get a few chasing the European places. But the the rest of the the sort of the leagues are, are, are almost like also runs, aren't they? And and by the time it gets towards the end of the season, you get five nils and six nils and things like that happening. You don't get that in English football. You are not allowed to do that. We have got. I think we pride ourselves as fans by demanding that the teams go out and they try, they give that 100% effort. And even if you're, even if you've already been relegated, we've seen it in the past, haven't we? Teams that have already been relegated and they can beat a team that's up towards the top of the league. And and I think the Premier League is like that. And, and the Championship is, we've always said it's the hardest league because you get the 46 games. If it was 38 games, Leicester would have got probably got promoted. I don't know what the stats were after 38 games, but they might well have been already promoted. But it's not. You've got another eight games. It's why it makes it so hard and you've got that relentless midweek schedules and 
you know, the amount of games you've got to play. So, you know, it, it, it does become really, really hard to, to get promoted. And, you know, I, I think, you know, I was guilty of it myself. You know, start of the year, January, February, you're thinking this is a really, really top Leicester team with the best squad of players. And, you know, I, I, I didn't expect them to keep it going right to the end of the season. But I honestly thought it would be Leicester plus one sort of, you know, four or five games left. They're both sort of edge clear of what's behind and that. But that's not been allowed to happen. And that's why it is, you know, the Championship is one of the greatest leagues in the world because you can get Millwall beat Leicester. You can get Plymouth beat Leicester. You don't get that in other leagues. And it's not good as a Leicester fan. And I'm, I'm not in any shape or form saying it is. But you, you just get that competitiveness. And I think it's really, really important. And it's a vital part of English football. Yes. Uh, final say, really, on... on... Um, the last week and the week coming up, uh, a week tomorrow, Jerry, as well as that Southampton game uh, mm -hmm. here at King Power Stadium. Ewan's already touched upon it. Fans are going to be key, aren't they? In these five, yeah. in these three of the four games, being at home, we've seen the turnaround with the games against Norwich and against Birmingham, how great King Power Stadium was on both Absolutely. of those afternoons. And that has to be the case again. Firstly for West Brom and then for Southampton. Absolutely, and you know Tony's already touched on it. That you know winning away from home in any league, it's difficult. It's not easy. Uh, so the f obviously the fans, and there's a reason for that because the, the stadium is filled with predominantly home fans, and obviously they're familiar with the surroundings, i.e. the players. When they hear the, the King Power roar, they're familiar with that roar, with the songs. So. It goes without saying that, you know, your home support is vital and even more so uh, than I. And, and, you know, we're going back to, you know, the title winning team again or the title winning season again. The part the fans played in that every time someone came to King Park. Yeah. They were absolutely massive. And it's going to take something along those lines to help, help the lads over the line. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. OK. Uh, coming up on Extra Time here on Foxy Sub, we're going to take a look at um, the best goals scored this season um, from a Leicester point of view, because the goal of the season voting is open um, on Foxy's Hub. So you can have your say on that. We'll also talk about the EFL awards. There were two Leicester players uh, in the EFL Championship team of the season. Uh, I'll also mention LCFC women as well who were in action yesterday. Before we do any of those things, uh, let's uh, hear clue number two for our Lurdle. So a reminder, we are looking for the goal scorer and the team that it was scored against, please. Fuchs tried to foul him but didn't. And the big switch. Terribly so. And now it's Mares Puts it into the channel for Vardy. It's a bit too wide to have a direct attempt on goal. Puts a cross. Play that one one more time for you. Fuchs tried to foul him but didn't. And the big switch. Terribly so. <laughs> and now it's Mares. Puts it into the channel for Vardy. It's a bit too wide to have a direct attempt on goal. Puts a cross. <clears throat> Jerry might have had a brainwave there. You and looks like you've got uh, yeah, no blank, idea. Blank. Shaking your head. Yep. Okay, uh, clue number three. Uh, is a little bit more of a giveaway, so try and get your guesses in now if you can. We need the goal scorer and the team that it was scored against. Um, right, LCFC women were in uh, FA Cup action yesterday, Ewan, weren't they? Oh, they were so, so unfortunate, so unlucky. It was the FA Cup uh, semi-final. It was away at Tottenham, uh, at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. It finished 2-1 uh, to the home side Spurs. If you just look at that, you think home win that's that is not the story at all Jutta Rantala gave the Foxes the lead after 12 minutes and they were hanging on and hanging on I say hanging on they were the better team for, for, for pretty much the full 90 minutes but with seven minutes to go Spurs equalized to make matters worse just as it was heading to penalties Spurs then got the winner in their 100th and 18th minute Ewan and what what an effort though it was for, from LCFC winning. I was um I was taking the Christmas tea, Christmas tree to the tip and I heard that the girls were winning 1-0 at Spurs um, and Spurs were then just bringing on uh, Martha Thomas and she is their top scorer. I mean, they'd been to... They'd, been, or they'd lost to Spurs away from home on the 17th of March so they were facing them again. I mean, it is the cruelest of ways to lose a game. Oh. And I think they had... The girls, they, the girls had chances as well after it had gone to... 1-1 to 
to win the game. But I mean, it's a horrible. Deserves to go to at least penalties. And but I mean, it's I think it's quite harsh. You've got a semi-final of the major cup competition um, in this country, and Spurs have got home advantage. Mm. I don't quite understand that. But yeah, within touching distance, it, um, it must have been a oh, really, really long journey. Home on, on the flip side, though, it shows you how far, how far yeah. the, the women's yeah. team has come yeah. in, the, in a short space yeah. of time. You know, it was a fantastic achievement to, to get to the FA Cup semi final. So, yeah, so and be that close to getting uh, to Yeah, the absolutely. Final. So, there's always, like you say, a horrible way to go out, but, you know, big positives for the, for the women's team. Yeah, I think it was well well over a thousand Leicester fans as well travelled down, which was uh, fantastic support as well for LCSC women. There, I mean, they all uh, obviously went over uh, at the end to Jerry's. Uh, they went over at the end to to clap the, the supporters, and rightly so. Right, I was just having a little giggle there because Jerry has written down an answer for the Lurdle, which is incorrect. Um, <laughs> Bubba has double checked that. Are we sure it's definitely not Vardy against Spurs? <laughs> we are sure that it's not uh, Jamie Vardy uh, against Spurs. Right, let's do clue number three then. This gives a lot more away and you then only need the team. So let's play clue number three then. Fuchs tried to foul him but didn't. And the big switch. Terribly so. And now it's Mares Puts it into the channel for Vardy. It's a bit too wide to have a direct attempt on goal. Puts a cross in. No, Nokazaki's there. What a goal that is by Leicester City. I've got it right. Well, you got the, the player right. I've got right. the player right. You got the player I've, right. right. I haven't got I've the missed team that. Right. I only glanced at the team. Oh, okay. that you put. Jerry's written down West Brom. It's not West Brom. Um, well, I got Shinji. You did say she, you did put Shinji. I missed that. <laughs> he's been, so well done. Look, he's, he's, he's buzzing. Delighted, isn't he's he? absolutely buzzing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play it one more time. Uh, see, it, see if the build-up maybe rings any bells for anybody. Fuchs tried to foul him, but didn't. And the big switch. Terribly so. And now it's Mares puts it into the channel for Vardy. It's a bit too wide to have a direct attempt on goal. Puts a cross in. No, Nokazaki's there. What a goal that is by Leicester City. Shinji. Well, well done, Jerry, for getting uh, Shinji Okazaki correct. But you got the team wrong, okay. uh, and it looks like you still don't know who the team might be. No. Have a few more. Have a little think. I'm sure you would have been there mm. alongside Sam. So it's up north somewhere. Um, during the commentary. Maybe not. Maybe not. Um, right, EFL Awards time then. Uh, we knew Kieran Dewsbury Hall uh, was nominated for the player of the season alongside Somerville uh, of Leeds, of course, and Smoddix of Blackburn. Smoddix scoring against Leeds, uh, ironically, uh, on Saturday, which was good for Leicester, of course. He didn't win it, the the, the player of the season, um, but to be nominated, firstly, was good. He made the team of the season alongside Mads Hermans and Ewan. Uh, and rightly so, the season that he's had. Um, I think out of the two... Him and Somerville, I, I think Dewsbury Hall's been the most consistent. When you think that Somerville is a natural winger, that's that's the position. He, he, he hasn't, he doesn't give Leeds too much defensive help in the position that he plays. I mean, Dewsbury Hall does both. You know, he, he gets back and does his defensive work for the team, and then he bursts forwards with that pace and power and energy that that we know he has, and has scored what. 12 goals, only uh, Rutter and Leif Davis have assisted more or created more goals than Dewsbury Hall. So I, I think I think Keenan has been more consistent in his performances. I've seen Leeds quite a lot of late and Somerville sort of flattered to deceive. I, I thought he was poor against Leicester at Ellen Road. He never really had a kick on Saturday against Blackburn. So I, I think I think Keenan will be slightly... Disappointed and he's got every every um, right to feel aggrieved that he didn't win the the, the major honour. But as you say, it's great to be nominated for these things. But I, I think both deserve to be in, in in that EFL Championship starting eleven. Yeah, do you agree with that, Tony? Yeah, I, I do agree with that, Dan. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Keane has been consistently very good this season. Um, I love watching him play. He, he seems to be growing in confidence and getting better. And maturing as a player, he's still relatively young, isn't he? So, um, no, I think he's had an outstanding season. Uh, I think Somerville's done well, but for me, Sammy Smodic is a is a top player. He's got a lot of goals this season. Um, but Jews behold, let's hope he can continue his form. We certainly need him to be playing well in these last few games. Mm. 
Yeah, Mad Hermanson as well, in particular, Tony, as we've rightly said there, is, has looked really good and really assured. OK, there's been the odd mistake uh, here and there. The two that come to my mind, Blackburn away and then here against Birmingham. Leicester won both of those games. And, and he's created, yeah. and we'll come on to it a little bit later when we're talking about the goal of the season as well. He's started a lot of moves that have led to goals as well this season. Yeah, he's been an excellent signing, hasn't he, Danny? You know, I've been really sort of pleased with him this season. You know, again, very commanding goalkeeper, isn't he? And thoroughly deserves his place in that team. Was there no Harry Winks in there, Dan? Was he not? Was no, he not just, nominated? Just, just those two made the uh, made the well, team this season. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I think he certainly deserves a mention, Harry Winks, because I think in the Championship, where it is such a slog, we've spoke about it on tonight's show, and it's a real slog, and it the hardest thing to do in the Championship. It's to be consistent. And I think, for me, Harry Winks has been very, very consistent. So, you know, I'm sort of surprised to hear he's not in that team. But both the goalkeeper and Jules Behold, for me, both deserve their place in that in that team. Yeah, just having a look at... at Strange the, lineup, the, isn't the, it? Strange <laughs> formation. The championship team of the season. Hermanson in goal, as we said. Leif Davis, the, the left-back of Ipswich. He's been absolutely fantastic. Greaves from Hull. Ampadu from Leeds. Walker Peters of Southampton make up the back four. Then it's Gabriel Sara of Norwich in midfield alongside Dewsbury Hall. Somerville, Smodix and uh, Whitaker, Morgan Whitaker of Plymouth, of course. I think he's got about 19 goals this season. Uh, and then Rutter up front from a Leeds perspective. So three Leeds players in there, two Leicester, one Ipswich, you know, Southampton, Blackburn. Where's Adam Armstrong? Mm. 20 goals. I think there's only three of the players who have created more. I think he's another one that... Well, Phil slightly. Had Ricardo Pereira not suffered the injuries that he had, I think he'd have had a great chance to be in that right-back position. Yeah, I think there's only three players in the league that have got 10-plus goals and assists. Um, Kieran Drewsbury Hall yeah. being one of those, of course. Gabriel Sara of Norwich, he's in the team. And then Adam Armstrong as well. Yeah, so I think he's very unlucky not to... Yeah. Not to be in that in that eleven, um, but from a from a Leicester point of view, Jerry, just th those two could have been more. I mean, we yeah, uh, wings yeah, wings. Could I, I, how old is Hermanson? He's he's young. Off the top of my head, twenty two. Yeah, he's, he's like early twenties, isn't he? Uh, twenty three. Twenty three. Even so, that's, that's first a great, season in the great, 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 well, First season, twenty two, twenty three. That's a great achievement. He's vitally important to the way the team plays. You know, building up from the back. He's obviously a, a confident goalkeeper with the ball at his feet. And yeah, he's been caught a couple of times. But because the way Enzo wants his goalkeeper to play, he will do. And I think the manager takes full responsibility in that. He's made some outstanding mm -hmm. saves uh, in, 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 in the season. So yeah, all, all credit to him in his first, first season. Uh, at this level, he can be extremely pleased. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Jews Holes and Old Brown. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but even for the player of the season, you know, the lads have already touched. He's the best player in the championship. Yeah, and we're not being biased. No, we're not. You know, him and Hermanson stand out for me yeah. as genuine Premier League players. Hopefully, they will be with Leicester yeah. <laughs> next season, <laughs> uh, of course. Uh, right, let's do goal of the season bits. Then, in fact, let's do the last of our lurdles. Uh, it might give something away. Scott has guessed, is it Mares against Everton in the 3-2? You might have missed clue number three um, because we know Shinji Okazaki is the goal scorer. Andreas has guessed at Newcastle. Uh, it is not Newcastle. I'm going to play you clue number four, though. Puts it into the channel for Vardy. It's a bit too wide to have a direct attempt on goal. Puts a cross in there and Okazaki's there. What a goal that is by Leicester City. It was a wonderful ball by Mares, a selfless run by Vardy, and what a cross from the Leicester number nine. And there was the ever-willing Shinji Okazaki to get across his man and side-foot it past Fraser Forster. There we go, people writing some bits down. Jerry's got the right answer, even before you heard that clue Correct. there, Jerry. So well done, you got it after three clues. You and um, has written something down that is incorrect. Ah, OK. Right My team, job is gone. wrong game. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Jerry can leave now. We've still got 20 <laughs> minutes of the show left, but <clears throat> whatever happens from now on, you know you've done your job, haven't you? Uh, right, yeah, last chance for people to get their guesses in then. Uh, we need the team that Leicester were playing against when Shinji Okazaki scored that. The reason we've picked that is... Any idea? Because we've got Southampton coming up Tuesday. No. Nope. Oh, it's his birthday. No, it is Shinji Okazaki's birthday uh, tomorrow. 
Oh. He will turn 38 tomorrow, Shinji Okazaki. We spoke about him a couple of weeks ago on this show uh, because he announced his retirement um, from football. What an unbelievable servant he was uh, to this football club. We still need your guesses, though, for the team um, that he scored that goal against. Right, goal of the season, then. Uh, the nominations. Scott, Scott has guessed Everton 3-2, Shinji. It wasn't Everton either, Scott. Um I'm afraid it wasn't 3-2 against Everton, those two guesses that you've got in. So have another go. Uh, right, yes, goal of the season from a Leicester point of view. We've put, I think, 10 goals uh, on the website for your chance to vote for your favourite. There's some unbelievable strikes in there. Off the top of my head, you're thinking <coughs> Patawu against Bournemouth, James Justin against Cardiff. Team goal-wise, my personal favourite, Tony, you were there at Vicarage Road, weren't you? Uh, Ricardo, fantastic team goal. He slots it away uh, at the end. Both you and Chris said on commentary, it'll definitely be in the conversation for, for goal of the season, and absolutely it is. Yeah, well, we're just talking about the goalkeeper playing out from the back, won't we, Dan? And that's where it all started. Um, you know, it was a wonderful team goal. I've, I've looked at all the nominations, had a quick run through the goals that have been nominated, and I'm heavily biased because I'm going to mention three goals, and I'll leave the lads to purr about the other ones. But I, I, I really like Jamie Vardy's finish. I can't remember who it Blackburn. was against. Blackburn. Blackburn, yeah. Yeah, Blackburn. Yeah. It was a real striker's left foot, yeah. smashed it into the top. I really like that from a striker's point of view. You've already led me into Ricardo's goal at Watford. I was doing the commentary. And that from a team point of view, it's definitely the best team goal. Whether that is what the fans will go for as the best goal, we'll have to wait and see. Definitely the best team goal. And the other one I'm going to nominate is another game that I was doing the commentary for, and that was Harry Winks' goal at QPR. Yeah. I, I just think technically it was just a wonderful goal, a really important goal for Leicester on that day. Ended up with a 2-1 win, and that was one of the goals. And so for me, Harry Winks, Jamie Vardy and Ricardo. if you're going to push me, I'm going to go for the team goal, which was Ricardo's goal. Yeah, some great strikes in there, mm. Jerry. You, you, you saw them through when we did Match Day Live on yeah. Friday ahead of the... The Plymouth I, game, we looked through them all. I've, and... got, I've gone for James Justin because of the degree of ridiculousness. <laughs> against Cardiff, that Against one, Cardiff. It? Just, well, you know, you, there, there, there's an argument, as Tony said. I love Jimmy Vardy strike of Blackburn. As Tony rightly says, one touch, bang, you know, left foot. Great goal. Great goal from a really difficult angle as well. And at pace and no time to settle in. Just a touch <laughs> and a bang. So there's arguments for... A lot of the goals out there, but I just think <clears throat> how, what he's done and how he's done it, you know, is reserved for a few players at the top of the footballing tree. Yeah. And, and he's pulled something ridiculous off. Yeah, the, the list, the 10 goals are as follows Casey McAteer against Rotherham, Jamie Vardy against Blackburn, Harry Winks against QPR, Steffi Mavadidi against sure. Ipswich, James Justin against Cardiff. Ricardo uh, against Millwall. That was in the FA Cup. Another great team goal. Uh, Keenan Dewsbury Hall at home to Swansea. Yet again, another really good move. Ricardo's against Watford. We've spoken about that. Patawu uh, away at Bournemouth. And then Steffi Mavadidi against Chelsea in the FA Cup, which is also a, a brilliant mm, goal finish. Um, as well. Uh, I just need to find the uh, comment that we got through. Terry Moore on YouTube. <laughs> They said the goal of the season has to be Alex Desarzi, the, the Chelsea player who scored that uh, own goal oh, at Stamford Bridge in the same game <laughs> uh, as Steffi Mavadidi. But that, that's been classic Mavadidi this season, hasn't it? That's what he does. He cuts in from that left-hand side. And... and it's hard to stop. You know, we, we've... I think Leicester have had it happen to them in the last two away games. Longman cutting in from that left-hand side and it was a fantastic finish down at the den and a similar goal. Uh, is it still home park? Plymouth, yeah. Yeah. Plymouth uh, on, yeah. on Friday night, cutting in from that right-hand side. And it's just so hard to stop. He's got that sort of foot over with both legs that, I mean, you know it's coming, but there's nothing you can do about it. Um, but I, I I, agree with Tags. I was at the Cardiff City Stadium and it was one of those, as soon as he's hit it, and I, as soon as I've seen it hit the back of the net, I was like, that's the goal of the season, there and then. The James just Competition side, over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bubba agrees with both you and Jerry, actually. Yeah, that's he, he unbelievable thinks strike. It's, um, he thinks it's James Justin away at Cardiff. So just you and I, Tony, that, that disagree with those two. Um, but it's a game of opinions, isn't it? Absolutely. And you can have yeah, yours. It is. Yeah. yeah, it is. 
Yeah, and you can have your say uh, on the website. So head on to lcfc.com and vote for your favourite. You can watch all 10 goals, uh, of course, uh, as well. Right, uh, let's get the answer then for our Lurdle. Scott, I, I really wanted you to get it right. You've had a few goes. You've guessed Newcastle. It isn't Newcastle. Shinji, of course, did score uh, against Newcastle, didn't he? But it's not that goal. Jerry, you can take the adulation. You can tell us who the goal was against. Southampton. Correct. Yes, it was a 4-1 victory back in the 17-18 season. Leicester was scintillating that evening. That was an example uh, of one of their um, goals that evening. That was great, and Shinji's got it, and Jerry was right. Mm -hmm. We'll see if he's right with our Jenga a little bit later on. Before we do that, though, you and Roberts, <gasps> time to take the show away with globe trotting, please. Yeah, we, we didn't do it last week because our Wi-Fi was playing up, wasn't it? <laughs> um, <laughs> long throws. Gonna start. We're going to talk a little bit about long throws. <laughs> And there was a game last Tuesday night in the Aviva Stadium in Dublin. It was a European qualifier. The Republic of Ireland v England. England, the holders, they won their first game. Oh no, they drew their first game against Sweden. Anyway, England are 2 0 up and Ireland are going for it. They're bombarding. I think it was Mary Earps in goal for England. Bombarding. Everything's going in there. Free kicks, long balls. They get a throw in halfway in the England half uh, with a few minutes to go. And Megan Campbell steps up to take take it. And it's literally halfway in the England half. And yes, yeah, she's got a long throw, but honestly, she produces this, this throw-in. I could not believe it when my son showed it me. Uh, she she nearly reaches the halfway line. It's an absolute... TC, I don't know if you've seen it, mate, but it's incredible. Honestly. I've seen, yeah, I've seen it, you, and it's an incredible throw, isn't it? It may, it got me thinking about sort of the long throw specialist that we've seen over the years. Um, I think, I don't know whether he played in the final tag. He did, he did, yeah. Probably, yeah, he did. I don't know whether he played in the final, but he, he certainly did, yeah. had a long throw. But I am so old that I'm going back many, many years here to the 1970 FA Cup final. Ian Hutchinson doing the long throw for Chelsea. And he used to do his arms were going like that when he threw it. <laughs> and David, David Webb scored the winner for Chelsea. And he, he launched it from one side of the pitch. It was flicked on sort of near post. And then Dave Webb scored at the far post. And, uh, you know, as a five, six-year-old kid, you see him throwing the ball that far and go, wow, I didn't realise anyone could throw the ball that far. But it, it can tactically, boys, it can be a real weapon, can't mm. it? Yeah, Vinny Jones had one. Vinny Jones, well. Rory Delap. Rory Delap. Who was the blonde yeah. herd guy? He holds the world record. Yeah. What's his? Andy Leg. Andy Leg. Yeah, yeah, Welsh boy. Yes. I, Welsh. I, was, I was reading about him, and apparently um, he went out to try and break the world record. Someone had a measuring tape, and I think it was 40 metres. He's thrown it, the width of the pitch, apparently. From wow. one side to the other. And he's, and without leg, bouncing. Without bouncing. And leg is the same. I mean, he's, he's a slip of a boy. Um, I saw him last Wednesday. He was at Birmingham as as a guest. But yeah, I mean, and I said, Leggy, what did you do to sort of be able to wait? So Rob was just natural. Yeah. Just got hold of a ball. And you can pin. I think sometimes it can be more lethal than a, than a free kick because mm -hmm. I think you can be more accurate and more pinpoint. With, and the flight of the balls. Yeah, 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 yeah. As well. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that Stoke team with the lap, that was growing up watching that. That was just when unbelievable. Peter that that was basically yeah. just a cheat code, wasn't it? Every time <laughs> yeah, but, they... You know, he, he, Tony Pulis brought the pitch in to the absolute minimum. <laughs> so made it smaller, so yeah. I think, narrower. Up, so to the absolute minimum, you yeah. realise. So for that exact reason and yeah. that reason only. So the lap Did you cope with Challenger in the final? Yeah. yeah. Well, we won it. So, yeah. no, I know, but did, did, his, did his throwings cause you problems sort of thing? Yeah, well, yeah, but, you know. And you got, you, Not when you're there. Nah, it, 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 uh, Elliot it behind him. I had to head a few more balls and I probably would have That was your game, time. That was your game, mate. Yeah. Um, at least we ain't got Elliot in the studio. We'd be going on about his goals again, yeah. wouldn't we? So at least we, <laughs> we haven't got to listen to it. Yeah, exactly. I, I must mention from a Leicester point of view, long throws. My, my brain immediately went to Lewis Hernandez that, and Mark O'Brien away at Bruges. Lewis and Anders brought him, wasn't he, that the summer Leicester won the league? Hardly played at all, but he has a hand in Leicester's first ever European Champions goal, League yeah. goal. Quite literally a hand in it because it, it was a long throw. Defender flicks it on. Mark O'Brien was there at the back post mm. and tap it in Bruges away. So that's, that's immediately where I went to uh, with the long throws. Right, we are coming towards the end of extra time. We've got about 10 minutes 
uh, to go. That means we've got to do our football Jenga as well as looking at our uh, predictions. So these guys can get a little head start of me because I've just been texted what our football Jenga theme is. Right. Uh, speaking of the League Cup, we've just been speaking about Chalana and Tramia. 27 years ago tomorrow, Leicester won the League Cup for the second time. So that'll be a different year, won't it? That'll have been against Middlesbrough. Mm -hmm. Name any of the 23 teams to win the League Cup since its inception in 1960. So since 1960, any of the teams that have won the League Cup. So the four of us will um, will start <laughs> thinking of some answers there while I quickly run through the predictions. Now, Tony Cotty, last week he thought we duped you of a point. We hadn't. But you will see at the end, the you, may, you may not need them, Tony. You may not need them because, well, fiction number one, nobody uh, has guessed that correctly. A reminder for those of you that might be new to the show, um, we all uh, have a go at predictions of five games in the championship every single week. If you get the result right, you get a point. If you get the score spot on, you get three. So nobody gets anything there. Birmingham three, Coventry nil. Tony Cotley there going against the form. Um, and against the table and said a Birmingham win and he was spot on. Birmingham though won 3-0. He only said 1-0, so that's a point for Tony. Nobody gets a point there. Everyone predicted an Ipswich win. Um, I thought it was me doing the predictions. Oh, we've not changed to Jerry. Oh. But it was you. These are your <laughs> They are. Yeah. Are you sure? And you can see why, because you get zero points, Jerry. Yeah. Uh, the next <laughs> one. <laughs> Looks like everybody else is on yeah. that. You know? uh, West Brom nil, Sunderland one. Nobody predicted that either. Jerry was the closest, in fact. If West Brom had nicked an equaliser, you'd have got three for that, but you didn't. Millwall three, Cardiff one. Uh, well done to Tony. He gets a point again. Nothing for me, Ewan, and for Jerry. Again. Yeah, you're right. So let's see what that does to the predictions table. Tony oh, Cotty. We're still a movie of shit. No, Storm. Very nice. That is, that's like the championship. Storm's into the lead. Well done, Tony. Uh, I, I had a lead, a massive lead, about two or three months ago, and now I'm bottom of the league. Five off the pace. Zero for Jerry, for me, and for you in this week. Tony, with his two points, takes him into the lead. So well done to Tony Cotty. Right. Oh, yeah, the Last minute Millwall goal as well, Danny. Could have been a, it could have been the, the, the correct score for me, couldn't it? Yes. Uh, right. Let's do uh, our football Jenga then. How many teams did you say was it? Twenty-seven, I think. Oh, okay, um, that. Okay. Let's have a look. Yes. Um, Twenty-three teams. Twenty-three. Twenty-three teams have won the League Cup okay. since its inception in 1960. So we need to, between us, try and name as many as we can. If we say one that's wrong, we're out. If we repeat one that's already been said, we are also out. So effectively, it is last man standing. Um, we'll start with you and ah. to my left-hand side. I'm going to go Liverpool. I will say Leicester. Who's next? You, Me. please, Jerry. Man City. Okay, yeah, I'm going to go Manchester United. Arsenal. I will say Chelsea. <laughs> Tottenham. Um, Aston Villa. Birmingham City. I didn't want to use it either. Yeah, yeah I'm, early, I'm going a bit, a bit early. So a bit early. Um, Swansea. Ah, oh. get in there before you did, Ewan. Was my plan. Forest. Not in Forest. Good shout, folks. Um, Stoke City. Mm. Answer. Tony, good answer. Everton. Oh. <laughs> no, I've never won it. I had never that written down. I had that written down as well. So thankfully you said it before I did. And now you can probably tell I'm stalling a little bit for time. Uh, while I think of another one. 
Uh, no, I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to cheat. I'm going to try and do it. Uh, there must be another one relatively recently that's won it that wasn't an obvious one. I would ever I might have to time myself out here. Uh, I will say. Hmm. Derby County. <laughs> I'm completely blank. Jerry and Tony are the two left. Middlesbrough. Um. Good shout tag, that. Yeah. Wolverhampton Wanderers. Oh, yeah, Andy Gray. Quite fancy Tony here, actually. Yeah, he's got. I he's, quite fancy he's got, Tony here. He's showing his age. He's, got, he's got experience. <laughs> he's got his age. I'll call he's, him experience. He's, he's digging into the 70s. Leeds. I've got two in the bag tags as well. I've got two. That's Leeds. Not, that's not a bad show. Oh! <laughs> Come on! Was that right, was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, West Bromwich Albion. Good show. Oh, Tony's, yeah. <clears throat> he said Wolves, didn't he? Yeah. Sheffield Wednesday. Good shout. Eight shout. Yeah. Was that right, Tags? Yeah, yeah, yeah was John that, Sheridan. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, golf the last week. week. The or the dinger. He scored. Dinger. Oh, okay. I am going for Rotherham. I think he's right. Yeah. Oh. I win. Oh, well, he's been. I was third in line. One, yeah, two, yeah, three, yeah, four. Yeah, yeah. Have, you, have you got any more? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Boo! <laughs> <laughs> Sheffield Wednesday? Sheffield. Sheffield must have won it. Sheffield? I don't know. I might. I win. Villa? <laughs> I said Villa. Sunderland's Sund Sund already been said. Sunderland? Sunderland. No, oh. Sunderland gets a cross. Well done, no, well done Jerry. Cup. You've had some evening, haven't you? Yeah. Got the lurdle after three goes. <laughs> nice and modest as well. You've had some evening, yeah. I've just had a look, Tony. I think Rotherham won the Football League trophy, um, beating Shrewsbury back in 1996. Um, but I don't think there wasn't the League Cup. They lost yeah. the cup final in 1961, I've been reliably told. Oh, as well. Nearly, did. Nearly. nearly. They got to the final. Yeah. Um, not a bad effort, though. I did fancy Tony there. I, I, I did. Must admit. I did. Tags, you. I, I can't believe it. I pulled that chef for the Wednesday. You were one. digging deep, mate. You oh. were, and you named the goal scorer. Yeah. I, well, that's what I, it just came to me. Because I, I know Shez pretty well. So. Well, your mate Bubba has said boom. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's a, it's a, it's a win. I just thought of Swindon. Swindon won it as well, didn't they? Swindon in oh, the 60s. Wait, wait for the dig. Yeah, there's yeah. a dig there. Well done, Tony. Yeah. yeah I fancied you big time there, yeah. Tony. Yeah, what still... about Oxford? Oxford? Oxford in the yeah. 85. Oxford, that's right. Norwich. Yeah, oh, it is. Let's have a look. Norwich. Of... Yeah. Something like that. Norwich won it as well, yeah. Blackburn, yeah. Luton. Blackburn, um, yes. QPR, oh, we said. Luton. Norwich, we said. Oxford, United. Too Swindon. late, Tom. Too late. Two minutes so, too late. <laughs> Victory's in the bag. The boom came out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've had it. It's it's a big it's a big night in the Taggart household, uh, the Tonorico household as well, celebrating over in the States as well. Um Tony will be kicking himself there with that Rotherham shout. Kicking himself. Right, well that that nicely pretty much <clears throat> takes us to um seven o'clock. We've got about a minute actually, <clears throat> you and Tell the supporters, tell the viewers, tell everyone how important these next ah, four games that. are for the they club. Know. And in particular, though, finals. the ones that are coming to King Power Stadium on uh, Saturday and on Tuesday for the, the, the West Brom and, and Southern. I think yeah. fans know the role that they've got to play. They know how important they are going to be in the next three games at the King Power. Four cup finals, as Tag said at the beginning of the show, nine points or seven points realistically should see you through 
you can get seven points to nine points from the three home games, having won back-to-back games against Norwich and Birmingham. I think this place will be rocking. I'm at Huddersfield on Saturday. I'm going to make, I'm going to make sure I'm there early, sat in my seat with my iPad to make sure I'm hoping for a, for a third consecutive win at the King Power for the Foxes. Yes, I hope you're right too. Thank you to you and thank you to Tony. Thanks to Jerry as well. Uh, thanks for the season as well on extra time because you're not here next week. You're not here on the oh, final on a high tax. either. So he's finished on a high, getting Lurdle after three clues, <laughs> winning the Jenga at the end against a formidable Tony Cotty. Um, <laughs> yeah, some night for, for Jerry. Thanks to the, the three of you. Thanks to everybody that has tuned in. Hopefully we've put a smile back on your face after the last couple of results. Huge four games to go. Huge couple of games coming up as well. We'll be live with Match Day Live from 11.30. On Saturday, of course, it is a 12.30 kickoff. So do join us on Fox's Hub for that, where hopefully we see Leicester get back to winning ways. <laughs>